Good morning to yet another video on the Project Corner. Well, good morning all just depends, right? The sun is just starting to come up here, but it's deep in the night in New York and it's already in the afternoon in Melbourne. So today I want to take a look at having different teams in one schedule and having that schedule represent those time zones and um, you might even want to have different holidays and a different special days off that that people might have in new york that they might not have in amsterdam or in melbourne so to do this in microsoft project you actually need to create your own calendars for those time zones so let's head over to an example schedule that i already created it has three resources on it we have Eric from the Netherlands, we have Dave from the US, and we have Steve from Australia. So I already prepared the New York time zone. And how I did that is I went into project, change working time. And here you will see that I have a New York standard calendar. Now that New York standard calendar has the New York time zone uh, already incorporated in it. And how did I come to those 14 hours, uh, 1400 hours? Well, I went into uh, uh, the clocks and alarm, uh, the alarm and clocks. And I found that, that if it's 1400 hours here, the working day in New York would start. So that was one easy way for me to find out which uh, uh, time I should have put in there because the first time it went wrong, obviously. Uh, so, um, and how I found Melbourne was easy, uh, zero hours because they're eight hours behind. So if it's midnight here, it's actually starting up working day in Melbourne. So let's head back on over to our schedule. And here are the New York time uh, tables, here are the New York time working uh, weeks look like this if I go into the default and I click on details I would see that I have set that to a specific working time from Monday till Friday and it starts at 1400 hours for my time zone and it ends uh, an hour before midnight so how would I create this for Melbourne so you create a new calendar and make sure to have this as a copy of the project before you change the name because it will overwrite. So standard, um, and this is going to be the standard of Melbourne. So there we go. Now I'm not going to look into the exceptions because the exceptions are the holidays and special days off. And I don't know the Melbourne standard days off, neither do I know the the ones in New York. So let's just start with the working weeks. Details. Now from Monday till Friday, and I want to change the default times for these days. Uh, and I want to set there to specific working, specific working times. So for Melbourne, we actually start at midnight, in my time zone. And we work for four hours and then we get a break for an hour. So this is going to be five. And we're going to work in nine till nine o'clock in the morning. And we're going to do that until Friday. And I'm going to speed this up because I don't want you to get bored and click away. So there we have it, the standard working days and working times for Melbourne. Now, keep in mind, this starts way earlier than I do in the Netherlands. And there's a little trick here that's going to happen. And, but before I get to that, let's change the working time for the resources. So I'm going to go to the resource sheet. And I've already changed Dave to the New York time standard. That's not the New York Times standard. <laughs> so 
Steve from Australia is going to get the Melbourne standard. And let's head over to the Gantt chart again. Now, one thing that I've done is I've elongated the start and finish um, columns because we're going to see those time zones or we want to see those time zones. So in order to add the time in the start and the finish fields, we're going to go into File, Options, and then we have the General tab, which has the date format. We're going to change that into the one on the top, which actually has the time in there as well. So for normal time here, it starts at 8 and it ends at 17. And when I click on Dave, I'll see that Dave does his 40 hours of work in five days, but he starts in the afternoon for me and he goes well into the night. Now let's see what happens to Steve, because Steve actually works way before I do uh, and finishes up the day early as well. So Steve from Australia would start at 0, 100 hours. But then what happens here? He doesn't start at 8 and he doesn't finish in one day because he finishes actually on Monday and we can show that by just looking at the, the resource usage view here. We see that Steve has task 3 and he starts on Monday but just has one hour of work. And it might be that one single hour that he still works on that Monday. Just remember that in the cal uh, in the change working time, go to project, change working time. The Melbourne uh, standard went on till nine. So there was one single hour on that Monday left for him to work on. But why didn't it pick up the beginning of the Monday? Well, because the project actually starts on Monday, but it starts on Monday, my time zone. So for Monday to be actually Monday that Steve can work, we need to have it starting at Sunday. And there we see that Sunday, all of a sudden, Steve works eight hours on Monday. And to make sure that we actually start at the beginning of that day, we can zoom in on a time scale for maybe hours uh, okay so we're going to do that this way where are we going to zoom in and if I go to the beginning of the task I actually see that Dave works from 1400 hours right and Steve works from 0 hundred hours and I can zoom in a bit more even and would have the uh, what does this look like? View time scale days no it's hours. Come on. Time scale hours bottom tier is going to be six hours all right let's have that to one hours that looks way better so let's navigate to tasks scroll to task here we see that Steve actually begins at the first hour of that day and when we move along the line we see that I start at 8 and we move along a bit more, we see that Dave starts at 1400 hours. So let's see what happens if we have Eric, Dave and Steve working on the same task. Task 4, it's going to be a 5 day working week and it's going to be auto scheduled. So normally it would start at 8 
but let's see what that does. So let's click on Dave, Eric, and Steve. Now it tells you something shocking here. Um, here it shows up as 12 and a half days. Actually, we, we still see that it's from Monday till Friday. So uh, let me just show you that again. Where if I click on tasks, scroll to task, you see that it still is in one week, uh, but that week starts at zero hundred hours and it ends at um, at midnight, almost midnight for Dave. Um, and Microsoft Project calculates working days at being eight hours. So actually, it incorporates a lot more hours here, and it calculates those hours as being uh, it calculates those days as being work hours, uh, eight work hours per day. So. Uh, don't worry, this is still recalculated on a summary level. So let's create a summary task here. Uh, we go into task summary and we see that it's still five days here. So uh, don't worry about this strange number here. But actually what we see happening here is that each of us work 40 hours for workday and each has their own time zone incorporated let's uh let's see that again with the resource usage on a more granular level uh, so let me zoom in a bit and zoom in zoom in and i'm going to scroll to that task again and here we see a nice set of deviating uh, work time. So Steve already started on a task, then I jump in and I still have two hours to work, uh, or actually four hours to work, or no, three hours to work together with uh, Dave. Uh, and Dave ends his working day at 11 p.m. and then Steve picks up again. So this is a really nice team. We almost never talk to each other, but we get the thing done. So that's it for now. Uh, this has been a wonderful exploration of time and, uh, well, not space. <laughs> this has been a wonderful exploration of time. And uh, one final note, if you do want to have uh, that um, exceptions in there, you would just go in and click on New York Standard and let's say uh, my birthday is a national holiday in New York sorry guys it's on a set Sunday this year mm. that's just too bad so let's say we, we start celebrating on Sunday and we continue on celebrating until the end of next week and this is now a holiday for New York. Uh, just like that. So click on OK. And I can even show that. On the schedule. By clicking on the time scale. And clicking on the non-standard time for New York. And we'll see that this is my birthday week. But we already got everything completed before time. So we don't have Dave skipping a week in the example. Um, but you might run into that in real life. So I just wanted to show you that as well. So again, that is the uh, clicking on time scale. And clicking on non working time. And selecting the... Uh, calendar that you want to visualize. You don't activate it because it's already active on Dave. You just visualize if there is going to be an issue in the near future. So that's it for now. If you like this video, please click that like button and click on subscribe. I will add this file to the OneDrive that I'm sharing with my newsletter followers. And there's a link in the show notes for that. Uh, if you're not a subscriber yet. Um, 
so you can play around with the, the calendars on your own. And I'll actually rename this file to calendar example. Um, so once again, if you like this video, please click the like button. It helps the channel a lot and consider subscribing. Thanks very much and see you next time.